Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blog Board. In this part 24, I have got some of the very latest and new questions that will surely help you pass AZ 900 in 2023. And please note, we have already covered 440 questions covering the length and breadth of AZ 900 exam, and more questions are added very frequently. In all these videos, I also share tons of Azure concepts, Microsoft documentation, exam tips, and also free PDF files. So, my friends, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I request you to please. Please do it right away so that you can get timely notifications of all our upcoming videos with the latest questions. So make sure to watch the video till the very end so that you can get a free PDF file for both part 23 and 24. So let's jump in and prepare for AZ 900 exam. So let's begin today's episode with question number 441. The question says that your company has an Azure subscription that contains resources in several regions. Now you need to ensure that the administrators can only create resources in those regions. What should you use? Your options are a read-only log. The second option is an Azure policy. Third one is a management group. And lastly, we have a reservation. And the correct answer for this question is option B, an Azure policy. So what is a Azure policy? Well, Azure policy helps you enforce organizational standards and to access compliance at scale. Through its compliance dashboard, it provides an aggregated view to evaluate the overall state of the environment with the ability to drill down to per resource and per policy. It also helps you to bring your resources to compliance. through bulk remediation for existing resources and automatic remediation for the new resources a really good documentation to understand azure policy the links are shared in the description box and now comes question number 442 it says azure ad requires the implementation of domain controllers on azure virtual machine yes or no and the correct answer is no and if you remember my friends the previous part 23 i promised to give you the logic for this question so here is the logic the azure active directory is a cloud based service and that's why it does not require domain controllers on virtual machines and if you want some documentation on domain controllers i shared that in the previous part 23 and with that here comes question number 443 it says that you can enable just in time virtual machine access by using your options are azure jit azure firewall azure front door and the last one is azure security center and the correct answer for this question is azure security center So friends I am sure that many of you would not know what is just in time so this is the documentation that will help you understand just in time virtual machine access the link as usual is shared in the description box but just to give you a summary just in time virtual machine access feature in azure security center it allows you to lock down inbound traffic to your azure virtual machine and this reduces exposed to attacks while providing easy access when you need to connect to virtual machine and now let's quickly jump to the next question this question starts with this statement that says that you plan to implement several security services on an azure environment now you need to identify which azure services must be used to meet the following security requirements the first one is monitor threats by using sensors and the second one is enforce azure multi factor authentication based on a condition so which azure services should you identify for each requirement and now comes our question number 444 that relates to the first requirement which is monitor threats by using sensors and the options given are azure monitor azure security center azure active directory identity protection and the last one is azure advanced threat protection and the correct answer for this question is option d azure advanced threat protection is the service that you would use to monitor threats by using sensors and here comes the next question question number 445 that relates to the second requirement enforce azure mfa based on a condition and once again the options are exactly the same but this time the correct answer is azure active directory identity protection 
Question number 446 says that you need to configure an Azure solution that meets the following requirements. The first one is secures website from attacks and the second one is generate reports that contains details of attempted attacks. So what should you include in the solution? Your options are Azure Firewall, a network security group. The third option is Azure Information Protection and the last one is DDoS Protection. And the correct answer for this question is option D DDoS Protection. So let's understand a little bit more. DDoS is a type of attack that tries to exhaust application resources. And the goal for the DDoS attacks is to affect the application's availability and its ability to handle the legitimate requests. And DDoS attacks can be targeted at any point that is publicly reachable through the internet. So how does Azure helps you? Well, Azure provides you two DDoS offering. The first one is DDoS Protection Basic and the second one is DDoS Protection Standard. And the DDoS Protection Basic is integrated into Azure Platform by default at no extra cost. And of course, you have to pay for the DDoS Standard. It has several advantages over the basic service, including logging, alerting and telemetry. DDoS standard can generate reports that contains details of attempted attacks as required in this question. So that's why DDoS protection is the correct answer. Moving on to the question number 447, it says Azure Security Center can monitor Azure resources and on-premises resources. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. So Azure Security Center is a unified infrastructure security management system that strengthens the security posture of your data centers and provide advanced threat protection across your hybrid workloads in the cloud. And what do we mean by hybrid workloads? Well, the workloads that are on-premises as well as the workloads that are on Microsoft Azure. So Azure Security Center is a great service in case you want to monitor Azure resources and on-premises resources. And with that, we have question number 448. It says all the Azure Security Center features are free. Yes or no? I wish all of them were free, but alas, they are not. So the correct answer is no. And just to give you more details, continuous assessment, security recommendations and Azure Secure Score are the free features available in Azure Security Center. For all others, well, you have to shell out some money. And now question number 449 says that from Azure Security Center, you can download a regulatory compliance report. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And the reason is that in case you want to download regulatory compliance report, for that, you have to use Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Let's move on to the question number 450 that says Azure Firewall will encrypt all the network traffic sent from Azure to the Internet. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because Azure Firewall does not encrypt network traffic. It is used to block or allow traffic based on source destination IP address, source destination ports and protocol. Coming up now is question number 451 that says a network security group will encrypt all the network traffic sent from Azure to Internet. Yes or no? And this time as well, my friends, the correct answer is no. And why so? Because network security group does not encrypt network traffic. It works in a similar way like a firewall and it is used to block and allow traffic based on source destination IP address and also source destination ports and protocol. Now you might be wondering what is the exact service that we can use to encrypt all the traffic sent from Azure to the internet. So let's find out the answer in the next question. Question number 452 says that Azure Virtual Machines that run on Windows Server 2016 can encrypt traffic sent to the internet, yes or no? And so let me give you more documentation on this question. Let's validate our answer on this Q&A documentation given from Microsoft. The question as you can see is exactly the same. It says does Azure Firewall encrypt all the network traffic sent from Azure to the internet? And here I want to show you one reply from Microsoft employee and this one here it says no Azure Firewall does not encrypt or decrypt traffic inbound or outbound. If you are sending a traffic with HTTPS, how will Firewall know what is the destination as the hostname headers are encrypted? So that documentation from Microsoft proves that our answer is correct.
And friends, I've got some more variations of the same question. Let me show you and let's try to find out the correct answer. So here comes question number 451. It says a network security group will encrypt all the traffic sent from Azure to the internet. Yes or no? And this one also is an incorrect statement. And this is because a network security group does not encrypt network traffic. It works in a similar way as a firewall and it is also used to block or allow traffic based on the source destination IP address or source destination ports and protocol. Coming up next in question number 452, it's another variation. It says Azure Virtual Machines that runs on Windows Server 2016 can encrypt network traffic sent to the internet. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, once again is no. Now, I'm sure that you would have seen a lot of contradictory answers to this question. But let me present my view. In my view, Virtual Machine could not encrypt the traffic to an internet host that is not configured to require the encryption. So what I mean is by default Azure Virtual Machines that runs on Windows Server 2016 cannot encrypt network traffic. However, you should also understand that Windows Server does come with the VPN client and it also supports other encryption methods such as IPsec encryption or SSL slash TLS. So it could encrypt the traffic if the internet host was configured to require or accept the encryption. I know this is really confusing because of different versions of the answers on the internet. But let me present you one more and then we will see some documentation. Probably that will clear out some of the confusions for you. So this is the last variation of the same question. Question number 453 says that Azure VPN Gateway will encrypt all the network traffic sent from Azure to the internet. Yes or no? And this time my friends, I have picked a yes. And the reason is this documentation here. It says that Azure VPN gateways. So Azure VPN gateways, you can use Azure VPN gateways to send encrypted traffic between your virtual network and your on premises location across a public connection or send network traffic between virtual networks. And I have shared the link for this documentation in the description box. In case you feel the answer picked by me is not correct, please let me know in the comment section and let's have a healthy discussion. But for now, let's move on to the question number 454. It says that your company plans to purchase an Azure subscription. Now, company support policy states that the Azure environment must provide an option to access support engineers by phone or email. Now, you need to recommend which support plan meet the support policy requirement. The solution given is that you recommend a professional direct support plan. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct solution. Moving on with the question number 455, it says that your Azure trial account expired last week. Now you are unable to, the options given are create additional Azure Active Directory user accounts. The second option is start an existing Azure virtual machine. Thirdly, we are given with access your data stored in Azure. And lastly, we are given with access the Azure portal. And the correct answer for this question is option B, start an existing Azure virtual machine. And please understand this concept very well, my friends, because I'm sure most of you or many of you would be using Azure trial accounts. So basically a stopped or deallocated virtual machine is offline and not mounted on an Azure host server. And what happens is that starting a virtual machine mounts the virtual machine on a host server before the virtual machine starts. So as soon as the virtual machine is mounted, it becomes chargeable. And now that your Azure trial account is expired last week, that's why for this reason, you are unable to start a virtual machine after trial has expired. And because it's a very, very important concept, I want to give you more details on all other options. The first option said create additional Azure Active Directory user accounts. Now, remember, my friends, that you are not charged for Azure Active Directory user accounts. So you can continue to create accounts even if the trial account has expired. Coming to this option that says access your data stored in Azure. So even if your trial account has expired, you can still continue to access data that is stored in Azure. And the last one is access the Azure portal. Well, my friends, this is quite a common sense in case they will not allow you to access the Azure portal. How are you even going to reactivate or upgrade your subscription? That's why you can still access Azure portal. 
I hope you understood all of the options. So let's move on to the next question. Question number 456. It says most Azure services are included in private preview before being introduced in a public preview and then in general availability. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. That's why yes is the answer. So most of the services go to private preview and then public preview before being released to general availability. The private preview is only available to certain Azure customers for evaluation purposes. Purposes. The public preview is available to all Azure customers. And here comes question number 457. It says Azure services in public preview can be managed only by using Azure CLI. Yes or no? And this one is an incorrect statement. And this is because Azure services in public preview can be managed using the regular management tools such as Azure Portal, Azure CLI and PowerShell. So there are many more tools that you can use other than the Azure CLI. And now we have question number 458. It says the cost of an Azure service in private preview decreases when the service becomes generally available. Yes or no? And unfortunately, this is not correct. There is no cost reduction in Azure services when they are coming to general availability. But I'm really sure that like me, you also wish this was true. And with that, we have question number 459. It says management groups enables you to organize multiple subscription in the hierarchies for unified policies and compliance. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. And the reason is that management groups helps you manage access, policy and compliance for multiple subscription. All the subscriptions in a management group automatically inherit the conditions applied to the management group. And now comes question number 460. It says what is guaranteed in Azure service level agreement for virtual machines? Your options are feature availability, bandwidth, uptime or performance and the correct answer to this question is option c uptime that's all for today my friends if you gained some value from this video please do not forget to like the video as this is the only way for us to grow and keep the content free and in case you are joining us here for the first time please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and also select that all option to get the timely notification of all our upcoming videos and please do care to share our videos on your social media platforms and i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching if this video has added any value in your learning a like and subscribe is highly appreciated Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.